your primetime local news leader. Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. We begin tonight with an update on a death investigation we've been following this week. State police have arrested a suspect accused of murdering a man at his home in Fairfield. According to the Maine Department of Public Safety, on Tuesday afternoon, the Fairfield Police Department responded to 247 Main Street, where they say 62-year-old Edwin Weeks was found dead by a friend who stopped by to check on him. Fairfield Police Department contacted Maine State Police Major Crimes Unit, which responds to all suspicious deaths. Police investigated at Weeks' residence for more than 27 hours. Weeks' body was transported to the office of the Chief Medical Examiner in Augusta, where an autopsy was performed and the manner of death was ruled a homicide. Late on Tuesday night, police say detectives attempted to stop a vehicle in Skowhegan, which was operated by 22-year-old Raheem Shamar Goodwin of Benton, who was a person of interest in the case. Police say Goodwin was traveling on Route 2 towards Canaan, where he intentionally drove his vehicle into a ditch. He then proceeded to barricade himself in that vehicle before lighting the interior on fire, according to police. Goodwin was arrested and brought to the Somerset County Jail in the early morning hours of Wednesday. This morning, he was charged with the murder of Weeks. Police say Goodwin and Weeks were familiar with each other. FBI agents arrested a suspect in connection with a shooting in Saco earlier this week. On Tuesday, 32-year-old Kayla Grant was shot on Temple Street. She remains in critical condition. On Wednesday, Maine State Police obtained an arrest warrant for 18-year-old Ariana Tito of Biddeford for attempted murder and elevated aggravated assault. Local and state authorities worked together with the DEA and FBI throughout the week and located Tito in Brooklyn, New York today. Tito was arrested and taken to Rikers Island. She faces extradition back to Maine during her first court appearance. Orrington residents will soon decide whether to enact an ordinance to prohibit people on the sex offender registry from living close to schools and churches. Residents of the town gathered at the Center Drive School Thursday for a public hearing to discuss the three possible versions of an ordinance. Options one and two are both citizens petitions, while the third has been proposed by the town's select board. All three would prevent those on the sex offender registry from residing within a 750 square foot radius of schools, parks and other areas where children are the primary users. Residents spoke up about the town's current lack of restrictions where those on the sex offender registry are allowed to live. Some folks would ask why do citizens, what business do citizens have to bring a petition for an ordinance into place? We did so because we had to and it's the right thing to do for the town. The majority of the select board, not everyone, and the town manager have failed us. The town will vote to decide between the proposed ordinances on December 11th. To learn more about the key differences between the three options, you can visit this story on our website, foxbangor.com. The U.S. Marshals Service District of Maine is warning people about a significant increase in phone scams in the state. They say more Mainers are reporting a scam involving individuals claiming to be U.S. Marshals or other federal officials. During the calls, scammers sometimes spoof actual phone numbers to fraudulently collect money or get other personal information from the victim. The callers sometimes claim to be actual employees of the U.S. Marshals Service and will even sometimes provide real names and badge numbers that can be found on government websites. The scammers may use threatening legal ramifications if victims do not comply. They say there are some things to remember. U.S. Marshals will never ask for a credit card or debit card numbers, a wire transfer or bank routing numbers. You should also never give out personal or financial information to unknown callers. Report scam calls to your local FBI office or to the FTC. Honoring those who lost their lives and staying Lewiston strong, the city is now teaming up with the Main Mill, the History and Culture Museum downtown, to preserve the hundreds of memorial items collected following the October 25th mass shooting. The city and Main Mill say they're working to preserve the memorials before the winter weather hits. Items at the makeshift memorials in front of Just In Time Recreation, Schmengi's Bar and Grill, and Raymond Park will be gathered on Tuesday morning. You know, the Memorial items that are being left are really emblematic of a community healing. And so it's important to preserve and document and then ultimately display memorial items as a reflection of how this community is beginning to heal. The main mill says it's working with a local artist on how to display those items. 
The main mill says the family's wishes are most important to them and they will help facilitate getting them any items from, them, from the memorials that they want to keep. Regulators voted today that New England's long shuttered shrimp business, which fell victim to warming waters, will remain in a fishing moratorium indefinitely. The shrimping business was based mostly in Maine and produced small pink shrimp that were a winter delicacy in New England and across the country. The industry has been in a moratorium since 2013 in large part because environmental conditions off New England are unfavorable for the cold water loving shrimp. Previous extensions of the shrimp fishing moratorium have been, uh, been for one year or three years at a time. The warming of the Gulf of Maine is an ongoing subject of scientific study. As part of its 10-year, $40 billion Delivering for America plan, the U.S. Postal Service announced that they'll be conducting a mail processing facility review of its Eastern Maine Processing and Distribution Center located in Hamden. This has prompted Senator Susan Collins to write a letter to Postmaster General Louis DeJoy urging USPS not to consider consolidation. Our Doug Banks has more. On Wednesday, Senator Collins sent a two-page letter to the USPS Postmaster General. In the letter, Collins expressed her strong opposition to consolidating Hamden's distribution center into the Southern Maine Processing and Distribution Center in Scarborough, saying, A consolidation proposal would not make operational sense and jeopardizes the reliable delivery of medication for Mainers. When asked about the letter Senator Susan Collins sent, Steve Doherty, Strategic Communications Specialist for USPS Northeast Region, said, quote, There are no plans to close either of Maine's processing facilities. In part of a press release about the facility review, it reads, The organization is assessing how this facility can best support service and operational goals. They're also considering public input as part of the review process. A link to submit written comments will be found under this story on our website, along with the full press release and Senator Collins' letter. According to Doherty, there will be an announcement of a public meeting on their facility review in the next few weeks. In Hamden, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Looking outdoors, it was a very comfortable day for this time of year, and hopefully there's more of that to come, but it sounds like we could get some wet weather over the weekend too. So let's turn things over and take a first check of our forecast now. All right, thank you very much. Happy Friday. The weekend's here. All right, so up and down temperatures out there today with highs in the 50s across parts of the area. Tomorrow, though, we're going to cool off, and then we could hold high temperatures below freezing through much of next week. Out there today, though, not so much. 54 here in Bangor, 52 for Bar Harbor, 43 Millinocket. Mil so the colder air, it's right there moving in this direction, uh, likely arriving in part tomorrow with temperatures near 40. But here comes the rain showers out there tonight night and off and on throughout the day tomorrow. Now, nothing really heavy in here, but it's going to be mostly rain with a little bit of snow north and west of Millinocket tonight. That snow, though, will not be a big deal with this system. There could be some more snow, though, in the forecast for us later Sunday into Monday. Our forecast then tonight, though, is rain showers out there, temperatures steady near 40. Your full forecast is coming up. All righty, Jeff, thank you. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, high demand for technical education across the state of Maine is leading to many students being turned away. We'll hear from educators about what they say they need. And two teachers in the Augusta School Department are trying to encourage more students to ride their bikes. We'll learn how after the break. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Orono is more than just a college town. It's an affordable destination. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, where we have both modern and retro games. And for a new experience, check out our nine-hole black light mini golf course. Budget-friendly, fun for the whole family, with 13 restaurants within walking distance. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orno Arcade. One buff a slow ride to go. Thank you. And could you tell me how to get to Down East Toyota? Oh, that's easy. All roads lead to Down East. 
Don't settle for a slow ride. Come check out Toyota's lineup of all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles. The 2024 Tundras are here now. These rugged trucks give you premium comfort, but will tackle your off-road adventures with exceptional towing power and traction. See them all at DowneastToyota.com. I'll have a bacon care of business, and why don't you order the king of the road? All roads lead to Down East on Wilson Street in Brewer. Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance, and I saved hundreds. With the money I saved, I started a dog walking business. Oh! Oh no, it's just too funny! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Dude, you coming? Because the only thing dripping should be your style. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. With Elka Seltzer Plus cold and flu relief. Also try for fizzy fast cough relief. JJ McCarthy in Michigan put the playoffs and a national title on the line against Iowa. Let's go! The Big Ten Championship, Saturday on Fox. Welcome to Masjid Junior, home for the holidays. I thought we were all going to wear costumes for this. I have to step my game up and cook my heart out. Oh, I'm so nervous. Come on, you donut. Dad, you can't call a kid a donut. It's fire. <laughs> donuts are nice. So MasterChef Junior holiday special begins December 10th on Fox. Welcome back. The legacy of late Holden Police Chief Chris Greeley lives on. Greeley pioneered the 25 Days of Kindness campaign, which gives back to the community in a variety of ways. And now Chief Eddie Benjamin has made sure that the program continues to grow. Our chief photographer Dave Simpson got to tag along today for a special delivery with some very special, uh, very special helpers. We're here at 41 Upper Dedham Road in Holden, and we're going to do a food delivery today as part of our 25 Days of Kindness. I have a new gift for you guys here. As part oh. of our 25 Days of Kindness program. I very appreciate it. Yeah. With the GM Family Market, uh, they were able to get 25 boxes of food, so we can donate here today. And we get uh, some gift cards from Hannaford as well. well. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Chris was always so busy, whether it was running here, running there, bringing gifts. But I think he started the first year with two to three hundred dollars, and then it's just grown and grown. And it was through the community. I mean, people even outside of the town of Holden contribute too, so it's not just people in Holden. Um, and I think they wanted to see real sort of boots on the ground giving, you know, where people cared about you individually and what you really needed. And that's the 25 Days of Kindness in the town of Holden. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank Just the community in general. Everybody's so pleasant. If they hear somebody needs something, everybody reaches out to help that person. Um, it's the way that things should be. This is Chris's son. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh you are? Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. The little smile on people's faces, you know, just making a difference and the positive impact. So that's, it's priceless. Such a great program there. Glad to see they are continuing it. Meanwhile, high demand for technical education across the state of Maine is leading to some concerns for education officials. Our David Ledford visited a local technical school to learn more about the issue. Enrollment is high at Bangor's United Technologies Center, but educators say it's so high that not everyone who wants to go to class can safely fit in the building. I have my, my classroom's full. I have every seat full. When I started here in 2011, uh, we were roughly around uh, about 500 students. Today we sit at about 800. You can only take so many students in some programs due to safety constraints. Educators say the high demand has been an issue across Maine and that the growth should be supported because students go on to fill roles in a variety of skilled trades. There isn't an industry in the state right now that isn't crying for more help. Ultimately, the students are going to end up going to Maine jobs and that's what everybody wants. And it's really developing skilled labor. Technical Center officials say they've seen the biggest surge in demand in electrical, welding and automotive programs. But they say they've still had to turn away a number of students simply because there's not enough space. Last year we had about 100 students that were interested in automotive. I can take roughly 30. When you have to turn them away and tell them that we don't have space, it's a really hard day. Educators say solving the issue could mean expanding facilities, but they say they need support from legislators and the community to make it happen. We could double our space 
potentially to support the growth. We can't look at a five-year plan. We have to look at something that will help support it in the next 12 to 18 months. This connects the dots for those students. I think it just gets you prepared for the real world, and I think it's important. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Staying on the education note now, the Department of Education has started a new campaign to recruit teachers from all over the U.S. in an attempt to fill staffing shortages. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. The Maine Department of Education and Live and Work in Maine have partnered in launching its nationwide Live and Teach in Maine campaign to help attract educators to the state. We, we do need to have um, people move to our state and raise their families and consider opportunities to contribute to the most important work, which of course is the work of educating our children. The campaign will help connect all that Maine has to offer for quality of life and the advantages of teaching in the Pine Tree State. The Media Blast will use billboards and social media along with big city ads and subways and buses. It's going to trigger something in those people who in New York, in Boston, in other cities um, who frequent our state as tourists. It's going to trigger something inside of them and they're going to be eager to come and um, consider a job in our education workforce. Some local schools like RSU 25 support the decision to recruit nationally. We've seen a shortage in, in teaching positions, especially specialist position, content area specialist. Um, this program is just one of many different ways that we have to approach at filling those spots. Both Macon and Boothby say Maine is the complete package when it comes to settling down and the opportunities it provides. We have the mountains, we have the beaches, we have beautiful forests and hillsides. Great opportunities beyond the workplace. You have the opportunities for to enjoy life, enjoy the environment, enjoy, you know, Maine is a wonderful place to live and work. The hope is to get educators from other areas to take a closer look at the opportunities in education across Maine. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Two teachers in the Augusta School Department are trying to encourage more students to ride bikes through a new program. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has that story. The idea is to get kids back on bikes. They ride when they're little um, into their you know, t early teen years and then once they get their driver's license it kind of falls to the wayside. Brenda Weiss is a wellness teacher at Coney Middle and High School where she also teaches physical education. Her program already includes biking but she noticed that students weren't continuing to ride after they left the course. She had the idea that a bike shed would encourage more students to ride so she applied for a grant from the Maine Environmental Education Association. The grant that I was awarded uh, for $1,500, I went out and bought tools and uh, a bike rack and um, anything that we could get started with. Weiss partnered with Thomas Hallworth, a building construction instructor at Capital Area Technical Center, which shares the campus with Coney. We build two sheds every year and we had one that was available, so we decided the school would donate it. Students from Holsworth's class got to work converting the shed to be used as a bike shop. They said their favorite part of the process had to do with building the drop-down shelving in the shed. Getting the experience. I really like learning. I learned a lot of new stuff. We got taught how to use all these different types of tools, how to do everything here. Part of the bike shed will also include teaching the kids basic repairs so that they can be more independent. How to fix tires and adjust the railers and replace brake cables and stuff like, you know, the basic repairs. Swift and Helmuth both think that the bike shed will help encourage their peers to get outside and put the pedal to the metal. I think they should. I mean, it's fun. You, you know, you get to go out and be active and burn out all that en extra energy and stuff. It's really a great sport. Um, great exercising. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. That's a really great, innovative way to keep, uh, keep those kids uh, active. All right, well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, after a vote in the lower chamber of Congress today, former Representative George Santos has been expelled from Congress. We'll have a reaction. And the truth, truce between Israel and Hamas has come to an end with Israel resuming its bombardment of Gaza. Love those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Who likes to drink good coffee? 
At Carabasa Coffee Company, we roast premium quality coffee beans from all over the world. Roasted to perfection in small batches, our coffee is always fresh. We offer large selection, including our specialty blends, organics, single origins, decaf, and flavor. Whether you like light, medium, or dark roasts, we have coffee to suit every taste. We offer flat rate shipping for online orders, and we ship fast. Garabasset Coffee Company. Drink good coffee. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candlepin Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Maine's number one Kia dealer, Van Sickle Kia, has a cost-friendly Kia with your name on it. Choose from our fleet of front-wheel drives, all-wheel drives, hybrids, and fully electric vehicles, all affordable, tech-packed, and great on gas. Check out the all-new 2023 Kia Nero Hybrid with 54 MPG Highway, or check out the new 2023 Kia Sportage or Sorento. All come loaded with safety features and are great on gas. Plus, get Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, the best in the business. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. How about that first half? I mean, that offense, they were slicker than a $2 suit on a $3 smile. Let's go back to the studio. A $3 smile. What do you mean? You doing, Bradshaw? I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, do you reckon I can say butter my butt and call me a biscuit on live TV? I do not think you should say that. Copy that. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Overwhelming majority of House lawmakers voted to boost to boot George Santos from Congress. Fox's Madeline Rivera is in Washington with more on today's historic vote. Less than a year after being sworn in to represent New York's third district, George Santos left Capitol Hill disgraced, no longer a member of Congress. Within hours, the office once his, consequently transitioning to reflect George Santos no more. At the end of the day, uh, with overwhelming votes, uh, we affirmed that code of ethics uh, and expelled uh, George Santos. The expulsion of the 35-year-old lawmaker marking an historic moment for Washington. Santos becoming only the sixth House member to be expelled in the chamber's 234-year history. It's not a, a partisan issue. It's a right and wrong issue. Friday's vote with 311 lawmakers affirming to remove Santos comes in the wake of a scathing ethics report, which concluded Santos sought to exploit his House candidacy for personal profit. Still four top House GOP leaders voted to keep Santos in office, as others voiced their concerns about expelling an elected member of Congress. For me, without a conviction, despite a damning ethics report, I felt that it was inappropriate to deny those constituents in his congressional district their right to representation. As for Santos, who has maintained his innocence, his replacement will be determined by special election. I mean, it's really, it, it hasn't sunk in a hundred percent, but it's, it's really a tough thing to digest. According to law, New York's governor has 10 days to schedule that special election, which then must be held 70 to 80 days after she announces a date. In Washington, Matt Rivera, Fox News. Now we go to some reactions from some of the former Congressman George Santos's constituents in his New York district. I'm really happy that this happened. The, they did an amazing job. Good job, Congress. You finally did something right. And we're really excited because he really did wrong things. It's not only Santos. It's all on both sides, both parties, the greed and the dishonesty. And, you know, people are not considering how it impacts the country as a whole. Um, on both sides of the fence. And again, with Santos's expulsion earlier today, he becomes the sixth member in the history of the Chamber of, of Congress to be ousted by his colleagues and only the third since the Civil War.
The war between Israel and Hamas resumed after U.S. officials said Hamas violated the agreed-upon terms with Israel. The temporary ceasefire, which facilitated several hostage-for-prisoner swaps, is now over. Fox's Nate Foy is in northern Israel with the latest. The sounds and sights of war are back in Gaza and Israel. <laughs> Hamas feels the power of our strikes. They only respond to force. With more than 130 Israeli hostages still in Gaza, Hamas refuses to release the remaining women. Shortly after leaving Israel this morning, Secretary of State Antony Blinken disputed Hamas's claim that Israel violated the ceasefire agreement first. It came on end because of Hamas. The IDF says it hit more than 200 Hamas targets in Gaza, including in the southern city of Han Yunus, where leaflets warn Palestinians to move to evacuation zones. Many did not. The cost to property and life is severe. Today, Hamas fired rockets at southern and central Israel and missiles at Tel Aviv, while Hezbollah terrorists resumed attacks from the north. But Israel's Iron Dome is strong. Israel later struck a terrorist cell in Lebanon, where it says attacks originate, putting homes like these and the people who live here at risk. You see the damage to that home here after it was hit by a rocket fired by Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon, the border just 100 yards away from this kibbutz, where residents have been evacuated because of the threat. And these homes will stay empty until the threat from the north is dealt with. In order to allow the citizens here to come back, we have to have clear indications from our enemy, from Lebanon, from Hezbollah, uh, that there's no uh, intention of attacking the people here. Those attacks continue tonight, with Hezbollah terrorists launching another round of rockets across the border into Israel, and Israel responding by targeting those positions with artillery. The United States, Egypt, and Qatar are now working to negotiate another pause in the fighting. But for now, the war carries on. In northern Israel, Nate Foy, Fox News. Meanwhile, the U.S. Senate is holding up aid for Israel as some Republicans and Democrats both have their own conditions they want included in an aid package. With just two weeks before the Senate closes for the holidays, it remains to be seen if Israel will have aid on the way before the new year. Fox's Rebecca Castor has more. As airstrikes resume in Gaza with the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas now over, Congress remains divided on how to send aid to Israel. There should be no conditions on any American support uh, for Israel. But that's exactly what some senators are trying to do. A group of Republicans want the aid package to also include stricter U.S. border laws. Is it going to take a Hamas-like attack somewhere on a border state for people to recognize we need to know who's coming into this country? While some Democrats want Israel to ensure it will reduce civilian casualties in Gaza, Senator Bernie Sanders writing in a New York Times op-ed, the blank check approach must end. And the United States must make clear that while we are friends of Israel, there are conditions to that friendship and that we cannot be complicit in actions that violate international law. The House passed their bill a month ago, allotting $14.3 billion for Israel and taking the same amount from the IRS. It has been sitting on the Senate desks over there for over a month. It's time for them to take action on that matter. And with just 10 legislative days left this year, Senate leader Chuck Schumer faces a tight calendar to get aid passed. If Republicans don't work with us in a bipartisan way on the border, passing a supplemental is going to be very difficult. Senator Schumer says the Senate will vote on its aid package next week, and senators are also debating aid for Ukraine, which the House bill did not include. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Retired Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor has died. The Supreme Court issued a statement saying O'Connor died in Phoenix Friday from complications related to advanced dementia and respiratory illness. She was a trailblazer and the first woman to serve as a justice on the high court. In 1975, she was elected to the Maricopa County Superior Court and four years later elevated to the Arizona State Court of Appeals. In 1981, O'Connor was nominated by President Ronald Reagan to the Supreme Court. O'Connor served 24 years before stepping down to take care of her husband, who also battled Alzheimer's. In 2009, President Obama presented her with the Medal of Freedom. She was 93 years old.
Unwrap a night of shining stars. Unwrap this! The Lego Masters Celebrity Holiday Bricktacular Two-Night Event begins Monday, December 18th on Fox. Miracle Ear made it easy. I just booked an appointment, and a certified hearing care professional evaluated my hearing loss and helped me find the right device calibrated to my unique hearing needs. Call now and book your free hearing evaluation. Are your basement walls bowing, crumbling, or failing? Hi, I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. All things basementy. Our stable lock wall system offers a patented, affordable, and permanent solution to save your foundation walls. It stabilizes, fills voids, and structurally repairs, leaving a new smooth surface. All the strength of new walls. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. Honey, where's the countertop? I sent it out to the granite shop this morning to be replaced. Wow. The quickest turnaround in the business, the granite shop in Sedgwick. The holidays are here and scammers are putting in extra hours. Keep these tips in mind. Carefully research any charity prior to making a donation and be selective when giving out banking information. When buying gift cards, stick to stores you know and trust and keep your receipts. When shopping online, look for HTTPS in the address bar to ensure you are on a secure website. Finally, trust your gut. If the deal appears too good to be true, it probably is. With these tips in mind, have a great holiday season from Bangor PD. We'll be here if you need us. Miracle Ear made it easy. I just booked an appointment and a certified hearing care professional evaluated my hearing loss and helped me find the right device calibrated to my unique hearing needs. Call now and book your free hearing evaluation. TikTok gets a big win and a big loss in two different state courts. While lawmakers remain stalled on a federal ban for the app, they say hurts children and compromises America's national security. Fox's Alexandria Hoff has more from Washington. It's the digital, digital fentanyl of our age. It's one step forward, one step back in the legal battle to ban TikTok. The social media giant getting new life in Montana after a federal judge blocked a law that would have banned it across the state starting next month. The judge ruling the ban, quote, likely violates the First Amendment. But further south in Utah... It's just one step closer in our fight to, to help Utah's kids. TikTok faces an uncertain future after a judge ordered the company to hand over sensitive documents related to the state's ongoing investigation into whether the app harms children. TikTok now asking the state Supreme Court for an emergency injunction. I do not know what else they are looking into. There is nothing in those investigative subpoenas that is not relevant to the complaint that they have filed. The battles at the state level Will come as action on a nationwide TikTok ban remains stalled. Earlier this year, the White House demanded the company's Chinese owners sell their stakes, but that hasn't happened. And just two days ago, Vice President Harris dodged a question about whether the app should be banned. You don't have a specific view on, on TikTok itself? I'm not or, commenting on it. Are you on TikTok yourself? I am not. Do you, are you not like but a, boy, a voyeur? But many people in my family are, I'll tell you that. On Wednesday, the Senate Judiciary Committee announced a hearing with several big tech CEOs, including the head of TikTok, testifying about children's safety on their platforms. In Washington, Alexandria Hoff, Fox News. With record sales happening during the Thanksgiving shopping weekend, there was a minor drop in the participation of Giving Tuesday. According to data from Giving Tuesday Data Commons, only 34 million Americans participated in the day. That's dedicated to giving back to charities and nonprofits. That's a 10% drop from 2022. The day did pull in an estimated $3.1 billion, which is a 0.6 increase from last year. 
The Giving Tuesday movement began in 2012, and it isn't just about the dollar amount. Folks looking to participate can also pay it forward through a variety of ways, like giving blood, volunteering their time at a charity group, or paying for the coffee of the next person in line. Proponents of the day hope it sparks a season of generosity that goes through the holiday season and into the new year. The Environmental Protection Agency wants to make your water safer. It's proposing a rule requiring water systems across the country to replace lead pipes within 10 years. Fox's Jared Halpern has more from the White House. There are too many uh, people in this country that are water insecure. They're the strictest limits on lead in drinking water since federal standards were set three decades ago. The EPA releasing a sweeping new proposal to make America's water safer by replacing all lead pipes within the next 10 years. If it's approved, the new rule would affect about 9 million pipes running through towns and cities across the country. That's something most of us grew up with and didn't think twice about. Now we're thinking about it, aren't we? A lot of people are drinking bottled water. But the proposal is expected to cost about $30 billion, and it's not clear where that money will come from, leaving some cities worried they'll be forced to foot the bill. Another concern, making sure the pipes being replaced are actually made of lead. The water utilities reported a lot of unknown um, service lines. EPA translated a certain percentage of those as being presumed to be lead. The proposal is part of a broader environmental push by the Biden administration that also includes a focus on green energy and renewable solutions. The EPA says it's just the beginning. More cleanup projects will be coming down the pipeline using funding from the bipartisan infrastructure bill. My office is investing $50 billion in water infrastructure projects all around the country. So more to come, more safe water, more healthy and thriving communities. The EPA says right now, more than half the population drinks from water systems that contain excessive levels of lead. At the White House, Jared Halpern, Fox News. Experts don't expect much to change when it comes to extreme weather in 2024. That's because some scientists predict worsening effects of human-caused climate change will combine with natural warming patterns to create stronger and more frequent weather emergencies throughout the new year. From increased risks of floods, more powerful tornadoes and hurricanes, and wildfires, Fox's Jackie Abanez takes a look. With the end of 2023 in sight, the United Nations Weather Agency says it is virtually certain to be the hottest year ever recorded. Citing how the world's average temperature has been roughly 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial times. That's about one-tenth of a degree below the warming limit set for the end of the century by nations that signed the Paris Climate Accord. 2023 sort of blew the record book uh, in terms of climate disasters, um, in terms of extreme heat, uh, extreme rainfall, uh, and, and all kinds of, of these weather events. But as we eye the new year, Gabriel Filippelli of Indiana University says we should expect similar forecasts throughout 2024. As above average temperatures triggered by human caused climate change generate conditions for extreme weather events to happen more often. They're gonna be kind of our new normal, which means that we have to prepare our own environment systems in our cities and towns to manage these extremes. Especially as the current El Nino climate pattern that fuels warming is expected to rage on into next year. El Nino Southern Oscillation starts uh, with, a, with a climate pattern in the Pacific Ocean and extends globally. El Nino is extreme warm uh, and sometimes we're sort of in the middle. Right now we're, we're pretty heavily into a El Nino and 2024 is likely to be one as well. This all comes as world leaders are now meeting in Dubai for the UN Climate Summit. As nations think of new ways to combat the warming, UN officials continue urging reductions in fossil fuel use and production. Jackie Abanez, Fox News. All right, and we'll have our full five-day forecast coming right up. High temperatures up near 50 for a few of us today, but tomorrow that will not be the case. Much colder air is on the way. Details on that when I come back. I told myself I was okay with my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. With my psoriatic arthritis symptoms. But just okay isn't okay. And I was done settling. If you still have symptoms after a TNF blocker like Humira or Enbrel, Rinvoke is different and may help. Rinvoke is a once daily pill that can rapidly relieve joint pain, stiffness and swelling in RA and PSA. 
relieve fatigue for some, and stop joint damage. And in PSA, can leave skin clear or almost clear. Renvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin, heart attack, stroke, and GI tears occur. People 50 and older with a heart disease risk factor have an increased risk of death. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Done settling? Ask your rheumatologist for Renvoke and take back what's yours. Avi could help you save. Great! Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. This holiday season, you can expect the same great deals as you do every year, here at Quality Jewelers. Come in between now and Christmas Eve to capitalize on our 36-month 0% financing. We also have discounts store-wide, up to 50% off select pieces priced to move. Our expert staff is standing by, ready to help you find that perfect gift to fit your price point. Make this year one to remember with us here at Quality Jewelers. Quality Jewelers, locally owned and operated, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. From creator Dan Harmon comes TV's number one new comedy. How did I live without this? Crapopolis, all new, Sundays on Fox. All right, here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Varney Ford, the nice car and truck people. And today we are talking about temperatures in the 50s on December 1st. Here we are, 54 here in Bangor today, 52 for Bar Harbor. Uh, not the case, though, Millinocket in Greenville. Much cooler temperatures there. They will be over the entire region tomorrow as cooler temperatures are on the way. Uh, there's lots of cold air right there, kind of moving slowly in our direction. So nothing terribly cold, but definitely cooler temperatures temperatures are on the way as the heat kind of retreats to the south beginning as soon as tomorrow. The long range outlook though, this is for December, January and February. So winter uh, keeps us well above average though in temperatures around here and basically across much of the country. So we'll see uh, as temperatures are above average probably for the remainder of the weekend into early parts of next week. All right, so rain's back in the forecast for us tonight and through tomorrow. Some snow well north and west of the area. Overall, lots of clouds in the forecast Sunday before an interesting system gets in here late Sunday, Monday. That could bring us some more snow as temperatures get cooler on Monday. Out there now, though, a very active radar. We have rain showers entering the picture now. This will be mostly, if not all, rain for our region tonight because temperatures holding steady in the 40 tonight. That's going to keep temperatures up just a bit. So there could be a bit of snow north and west of Millinocket, but overall, this is going to be a rain event across our area tonight. Some drizzle back in the forecast for tomorrow. Uh, a little bit of light snow and flurries on Sunday, followed by what could be another measurable snow getting in here later on Monday. All right, so a very active pattern. System one is over here, system two, system three, system four. You get the idea. Uh, so overall, we're going to cool things off a bit and bring more systems into the area. That could eventually give us some more snow around here. For tonight, though, mostly rain showers. Now tomorrow, there's going to be some drizzle and light snow around as well, mainly well north and west the Bangor area, though. This could be an inch or so of snow in there. That gets out of here tomorrow evening, a nice night tomorrow night, followed by a mostly dry day for us on Sunday, followed by increasing clouds Sunday evening, and that could give us that a little bit of light snow back in the forecast for us on Sunday. So overall, we're in a pretty active pattern here, and then watching Monday as this system comes our way, it looks ominous. I know there is a chance for some measurable snow late Sunday into Monday that's looking more and more likely around here. For now, though, snowfall-wise, north and west of Millinocket could see an inch or two of snow between now and, say, this time tomorrow evening. Overall, this will not be a big snow event for us. It'll be mostly a rain event, and that rain could be locally heavy. We're talking about a half inch to an inch of rainfall between now and this time tomorrow evening. Our forecast then tonight, though, is scattered rain showers out there, some snow well north and west of the Bangor area. Look for low temperatures down near 36 for tomorrow. All right, scattered rain showers and drizzle, highs near 43. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows cooler temperatures, 40s tomorrow, 30s on Sunday, also on Monday, rain snow mix on Monday, and then Tuesday and Wednesday, high temperatures right at freezing. 
All righty, Jeff, thank you. And sports is coming up next. Stay with us. Are plumbing problems giving you a headache? Look no further than Sprague's Plumbing Solutions. With more than 10 years experience, Sprague's Plumbing Solutions has the knowledge to assist with your plumbing issues. Whether it's a service, remodel, new build, or commercial, we've got you covered. For reliable, professional plumbing services, call Sprague's Plumbing Solutions today for a free estimate. 951-1637. We're here to make your plumbing problems disappear. Let's get it. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Sign and drive a Hyundai Palisade with zero down, zero first month's payment, and zero security deposit. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Do you need to replace your windows, but worry that your project will be hard to schedule and too expensive? Then call Renewal by Anderson, the custom replacement window division of Anderson. Our windows are made with an exclusive Fibrex material that's vastly superior to vinyl and backed by the nation's best warranty. Be sure to ask about our one-year price lock guarantee to secure a price that's good for one full year. Call Renewal by Anderson for your free consultation and a money-saving offer. Installation is always included. Call now. Time Hoops, beginning December 9th. It's the new celebrity guessing game. Who is the celebrity behind the relative? That could win you life-changing money. You got it right! Yeah. We are family, January 3rd on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We're going to start over at the Alphon. For the first time in over a decade, Maine men's hockey facing arch rivals UNH in a matchup of ranked teams. The 11th ranked Black Bears looking to bounce back after the BU sweep against UNH. They are 15th. First period, UNH's Alex Ganya to Harrison Blaisdell. He rips one for the goal. Wildcats break it open one to nothing. All right, seven seconds left in the period. First seconds off a power play, Maine's Bradley Nadeau over to his brother Josh. He scores. We're knotted at one after one. All right, under 30 into the second, Maine's Thomas Real bounces this one off a Wildcat defender. That finds the back of the net. Maine is up two to one. To the late second we go. Bradley Nadeau on the break, gets through, finds Josh for the one-timer. His second goal of the game. He would have a hat trick as Maine wins five to two. It's a really nice feeling. Uh, I think it's good for me, for my confidence on the ice. But I, I got to give the credit to uh, my, my teammates that has been feeding me good passes. All right, that's a big win. Now let's go to some high school basketball. The Brewer Witches boys are still riding high off their first gold ball last year, but they'll be riding with some new faces and a new coach. Our Ryan Sudol finds that's not stopping their confidence. It was a moment nearly a century in the making. Everything we do, we, we strive just to get back to that night. That team really felt like family, and to win it with them was just so special for us. But now the defending Class A boys champs Brewer have a whole new family dynamic, starting with a brand new starting five. It, it's been difficult. We are, we're building our experience. That's the main thing. Um, most of us from last year are either swing players or we're straight JV. The team needs new leaders. Good thing that they are all rising to the occasion. I have to uh, just try to be a leader for the kids that are just coming out from JV from last year and the kids that didn't really get a lot of minutes. Help them understand how the game works. And they'll have a bunch more help in doing that from the sidelines too. There's a new head coach in town and 30-year veteran Carl Parker. It's been great. Good bunch of kids. They are hardworking. Um, they love to play. I think they have good feeling for each other. He knows his stuff. He knows how to get us into the spirit of basketball and how to take care of business. Even with the new faces, the team is really taking care of business on the defensive end 
creating a lot of confidence right out of the gate. They really listen to fundamentals. They box out relatively well, uh, which means people aren't getting second shots. Uh, and so, you know, you always have a chance. And even though the coaches of the KVAC voted the Witches ninth in the conference, they believe they have the chance to make a deep playoff run. I feel like we could go a long way, but we just got to keep on working and uh, keep humble. But I think as the season progresses, we're going to get surprise a lot of people. We practice hard. We do everything that coach tells us to do, and I think we can go all the way. In Brewer, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. All right, thank you for that, Ryan. Let's stay with some basketball. Time for the Celtics now. Boston hosting Philly in their last game before the in-season tournament on Monday. It's Red Arbeck here looking on, and then in the front row, it's Paul Pierce as well watching his former team. Boston looking to stay hot early in the second. Sees up. Drew Holiday drives and kicks to Jason Tatum. He steps into one and knocks it down. Same quarter. Close game now. Off of the Jalen Brown miss, Sixers are going to run the break. Pat Beverly here is going to find Tobias Harris. He finishes in the paint. Philly up one. They would lead at the half. But the Celtics would close the gap and then some. Up one in the fourth. Derek White goes coast to coast on the fast break. Gets that one to go. And then here is the icing on the cake. Drew Holiday to a wide open Peyton Pritchard under the basket. He finishes for two. Celtics win 125-119. All right, let's go to the Patriots now. It has officially been reported that Bailey Zappi will indeed be the starting quarterback when the Pats take the field on Sunday at Gillette Stadium. The second-year quarterback will be getting his first start of the season. He started two games last year while Mac Jones was out with an injury. Backing up Zappi as he was in practice all week will be Malik Cunningham. It's reported that regardless of if Zappi gets pulled or not, there's a package for Cunningham ready to roll out. Jones is not expected to play. This morning, Bill Belichick speaking with reporters. He wouldn't give away the starter, but here's what he had to say about Zappi. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty consistent. It's about what it's been all year. It's pretty even keel. Not, not a lot of roller coaster with him. I mean, he played some last year. You know, there were some times where he was, you know, competitive. Just a little more experience this year. So, uh, you know, we talked about that in training camp. Like, there's growth from players in year one to year two, year two to year three. Sometimes year three to year four. All right, let's hope Zappy will be a little bit more exciting than that. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Who likes to drink good coffee? At Carabasa Coffee Company, we roast premium quality coffee beans from all over the world. Roasted to perfection in small batches, our coffee is always fresh. We offer large selection, including our specialty blends, organic, single origins, decaf, and flavor. Whether you like light, medium, or dark roasts, we have coffee to suit every taste. We offer flat rate shipping for online orders, and we ship fast. Carabasa Coffee Company. Drink good coffee. One buff a slow ride to go. Thank you. And could you tell me how to get to Down East Toyota? Oh, that's easy. All roads lead to Down East. Don't settle for a slow ride. Come check out Toyota's lineup of all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles. The 2024 Tundras are here now. These rugged trucks give you premium comfort, but will tackle your off-road adventures with exceptional towing power and traction. See them all at DownEastToyota.com. I'll have a bacon care of business. And why don't you order the king of the road? All roads lead to Down East on Wilson Street in Brewer. Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance, and I saved hundreds. With the money I saved, I started a dog walking business. Oh! Ah. Oh no, it's just too funny! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. It's a moment.
Non-drowsy Claritin D knocks out your worst allergy symptoms, including nasal congestion, without knocking you out. Feel the clarity and make today the most wonderful time of the year. Claritin D. Winter is flu season, and not only that, but COVID is still with us, as is RSV. Remember, it takes your body about two weeks after you get any vaccination to ramp up those antibodies. Now is the time for you and your family to get vaccinated against the flu, COVID, and RSV. Updated vaccines are now available for flu and COVID-19, and depending on your age, active steps you can take to prevent RSV. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist, or go to vaccines.gov. A message from the Maine CDC, this station, and the Maine Association of Broadcasters. John Hamm stars as Detective Marvin Flute in Grim. Wait. Big bite. Grim's Bird. Special preview, January 7th on Fox. Residents in one local town are busting out their jing tinglers and hoo hoppers, or hoo hoopers for their holiday celebration. Devin Dagnall tells us all about it. This weekend, the town of Skowhegan will be known as Skowhooville for their holiday celebration. The weekend of fun is kicked off with a parade Friday night. This year was expected to be even bigger than last year's parade, which set a record having 50 floats. This year we're already over 40 registered and we have the whole day today to finish registrations. We always have people show up too at the last second, so we will probably be somewhere around 60 floats, I would say. The parade is impressive by itself, but what really makes the weekend special is how much the town embraces the Grinch during the celebration. So Mackenzie Kafer came up with the idea in 2019 to incorporate the Grinch. I love the Grinch, so I was like, if I could make the town into anything, I would want it to be Whoville, because like myself and a lot of people around us just love that movie and all the generations of that movie. Since that first year, it hasn't taken long for the event to turn into a total Grinch fest in the best way possible. I think the first year, like probably about half the people that participated in the parade went with the Grinch theme, and now it's like full on Grinch theme. If you can't make it to the parade, don't worry. There will be plenty more Grinch themed events throughout the weekend, and you can learn all about it by clicking the link on our website, foxbangor.com. In Skowhegan, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. I'm glad to see Devin is in the holiday spirit. All right, well, finally tonight, members of the Hancock County Sheriff's Department and their families got an early start to their day. They were helping Santa fill his sleigh with gifts for 200 children and almost 150 seniors. For 21 years, Sheriff's Charities has been carrying on the tradition. They raise money through fundraisers, including the Sheriff's Cup basketball tournament. It's extra work, but they say they want to help put a smile on a few more faces on Christmas morning. Love that. All right, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. And from everyone here at Fox 22, take care and have a great rest of your night and a happy weekend.